In this lecture, what we will be doing is we'll be taking a look at a number of different uh, problem solving tips for the gas power cycles that we've looked at in the course. And the ones that we'll be covering will be the auto cycle, the diesel, the Stirling, and the Brayton. So the first one that we will start with is the auto cycle. So there's the uh, PV as well as the TS diagram for the auto cycle. Now typically when you're solving one of these problems you'll have some information. Uh, usually you'll know the compression ratio uh, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll walk you through some of the different steps and show you how the equations come about that are used for solving these problems. So the first comment is that if you know the compression ratio, what you'll want to do is you'll want to look up in tables uh, that you would have in the back of your book. The tables that we'd be talking about would be ideal gas properties of air, and it would be one where you would have uh, the relative volume, specific volume, as well as relative pressure. We'll talk about that in a moment when we look at the diesel as well as the Brayton. Uh, but you would want the table with the relative specific volume and if we look back at our process, what we notice is going from 1 to 2 and then from 3 to 4, these are isentropic processes and consequently uh, we can take advantage of that when we're solving these problems. So if you start by knowing the inlet temperature, so that would be your atmospheric air temperature, you would go to the table uh, for the properties of air you would get the relative specific volume at state one. And it turns out that the ratio of relative specific volumes is equal to the ratio of the specific volumes at state one to state two, which we said was the compression ratio for the engine. And consequently, once you know VR1 from the tables in the back of the book, you can then go and the compression ratio you can then get VR2 and then go back into the table again and get temperature at 2. Now once we have temperature at 2, so that would be the temperature at this point, so we would know this temperature. We can then use the ideal gas law. to get the pressure. You will not always know the pressure. You'll know the uh, compression ratio, but you will not know the pressure. So let's take a look at how we can use the ideal gas law for that. So we know rho is P over RT. We can rearrange that in terms of the gas constant. So with this, we know that the gas constant will not be changing, and so we can say that P2 specific volume at 2, T2, equals P1 specific volume at 1, and T1. And consequently, that gives us a relationship with which we can then work to get the pressure. So the other thing that we want to do, let's take a look at what's going on during both the heat addition and the heat rejection processes. So that's going from state 2 to state 3, and then state 4 to state 1. And of note is the fact that this is taking place where we have constant specific volume. So the volume is not changing during these processes, and so we will take advantage of that. Uh, by looking at the first law. So let's start with 2 to 3. So 
So writing out the first law, and this is for a fixed mass control volume. Now the work in this equation here, if you recall back to when we talked about the first law for fixed mass, we said that the work could be work other plus boundary work. And the boundary work was defined as being PDV. Well, if we have fixed volume, that is going to be zero. And consequently, that term disappears. And the work term here disappears. And then what we're left with is QN is equal to U3. So the internal energy at 3 minus the internal energy at 2. And similarly, we can write for Q out, and so that is the heat rejection process, it is equal to the change in internal energy between state 4 and 1. And finally, the net work from our cycle can be computed by Q in minus Q out. So those are a number of different equations that you can use. Uh, each problem is going to be a little different because you'll have different information given to you. Uh, but you may wonder when you look at uh, solutions that, that you may see within any of your thermodynamics books, how they're getting particular combinations, <clears throat> especially this component here, neglecting the boundary work. Uh, but that is how they're getting the equations, and those are the ones that you can use then to solve problems involving the auto cycle.